In 1999, David Dunning and Justin Kruger published a journal article entitled Unskilled and Unaware of It, How Difficulties in Recognizing One's Own Incompetence Lead to Inflated Self-Assessments. Their research indicated that people who are unskilled or lacking academic or professional qualifications in a particular field have a tendency to estimate their knowledge and skills in that field unrealistically highly, whereas people who are highly skilled and qualified in specific fields tend to underestimate their knowledge and performance. Citing the observation of Charles Darwin that, quote, ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge, end quote, Dunning and Kruger explained the cognitive process by which people overestimate their competence in fields concerning which they are unskilled or uninformed. In agreement with Alexander Pope's saying, a little learning is a dangerous thing, commonly misquoted as a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, Dunning and Kruger noted, quote, in order for the incompetent to overestimate themselves, they must satisfy a minimal threshold of knowledge, theory or experience that suggests to themselves that they can generate correct answers, end quote. Accordingly, non-professionals should refrain from commenting authoritatively on subjects concerning which they are not academically informed or professionally qualified, and should instead seek to understand the subject from the relevant professional literature instead of from non-professionals and those who are insufficiently qualified. Note the qualification authoritatively. It's fine to have and express an opinion, but a non-professional or uninformed individual representing their opinion as an authoritative judgment superior to the views of actual professionals in a field is a red flag. Additionally, non-professionals should be prepared to accept that their personal views and the views of others who are similarly unqualified in the field are of considerably less value than the existing scholarly literature and consensus and should be prepared to accept that the consensus is most likely to be correct, even if it contradicts views or sources which they would prefer to believe are more accurate. Here is a list of indicators of the Dunning-Kruger effect, based on the reasons given by Dunning and Kruger as to why individuals succumb to the effect, and why they, quote, fail through life experience to learn that they are unskilled, unquote. The more indicators are present in a specific case, the more likely it is that the individual in question is experiencing the Dunning-Kruger effect. Skill boundary transgression. This means the individual is seeking to operate as an authority or qualified individual in a field beyond their personal level of academic and professional qualification. Note that carefully, they are seeking to operate as an authority or qualified individual despite lacking relevant knowledge, experience, and qualifications. Dunning and Kruger say, quote, Incompetent individuals, compared with their more competent peers, will dramatically overestimate their ability and performance relative to objective criteria, end quote. This is not to say that professionals cannot be wrong, nor does it mean non-professionals can never be right. The issue is who is more likely to be correct in a given case. In matters requiring professional knowledge and experience, the qualified individual is more likely to be reliable than the non-professional. While formal academic and professional qualifications are not evidence of infallibility, they do constitute objective criteria by which competency can be assessed, so we should place less trust in those lacking such qualifications. Self-identified authority. This means the individual identifies themselves as sufficiently competent to comment authoritatively on the subject, despite not being qualified and despite not having any demonstrable competence. Dunning and Kruger say, quote, These findings suggest that unaccomplished individuals do not possess the degree of metacognitive skills necessary for accurate self-assessment that their more accomplished counterparts possess, end quote. So we cannot rely on those who are not academically and professionally qualified in a particular field to assess accurately their own authority and competence in that field. Someone who has no knowledge, qualifications or experience in a field is not the best judge of their own competency in that field. Unrecognised competence 
This means the individual's self-assessed competence is not recognised by those who are academically and professionally competent. Dunning and Kruger say, quote, We propose that those with limited knowledge in a domain suffer a dual burden. Not only do they reach mistaken conclusions and make regrettable errors, but their incompetence robs them of the ability to recognise it. End quote. It is far more likely that an unqualified non-professional will be wrong in a given field of specialisation than a qualified professional whose competency has been recognised formally by their equally qualified peers. Additionally, people who are unqualified in a field are not reliable judges of their own competence in that field. False peers. This means the individual believes that the favourable commentary of other unskilled and non-professional individuals indicates they themselves are sufficiently qualified. Dunning and Kruger say, quote, Some tasks and settings preclude people from receiving self-correcting information that would reveal the sub-optimal nature of their decisions, end quote. By keeping themselves predominantly in the intellectual company of those who agree with them, incompetent individuals place themselves in a setting which typically prevents their errors being exposed, instead keeping them in a kind of intellectual echo chamber in which their views are reinforced by being repeated back to them with approval by those unqualified to assist them competently. Scrutiny avoidance. This means the individual fails to submit their work for professional scrutiny, such as in the relevant scholarly literature, for review by those who are genuinely qualified. Dunning and Kruger say, quote, One reason is that people seldom receive negative feedback about their skills and abilities from others in everyday life, end quote. Avoidance of scrutiny by professionals minimises negative feedback about their competence, keeping the unqualified away from those who are best able to expose their errors and preserving their self-delusion that they are correct. When a non-professional or unqualified individual makes claims contradicting the scholarly consensus on a matter, it is relevant to ask them if they have written up their claims and submitted them for formal review, such as sending them to an academic journal to be assessed by professionals. If they refuse to do so, it is very likely because they do not wish to receive negative feedback about their views and would prefer to avoid having them scrutinised by informed, competent, professionally qualified individuals. This suggests they are aware of the weakness of their position. Pioneer Complex This means the individual self-identifies as a pioneer uncovering truth, a gifted amateur contradicting the professionals. They may compare themselves to famous historical figures such as Copernicus or Galileo. However, this is a self-delusional identification since neither Copernicus nor Galileo were gifted amateurs opposing a body of professionals. In fact, both men were professionals holding formal teaching positions. They were opposed by non-professionals. In this case, it was the amateurs who were wrong. Additionally, Galileo in particular knew that the subject on which he was writing should be decided by professional astronomers, and he placed no value whatsoever on the opinions of the unqualified. Writing against the papal edict silencing publications on heliocentrism, Galileo scorned the unqualified amateur, saying, quote, Advisers who were totally unskilled in astronomical observations ought not to clip the wings of reflective intellects by means of rash prohibitions, end quote. In Galileo's view, the priests who sought to silence his writings on astronomy were, quote, totally unskilled in astronomical observations, end quote, and therefore, quote, ought not to clip the writings of reflective intellects, end quote. Conspiracy Claims This means the individual explains opposition by qualified professionals as suppression of truth in order to defend the existing scholarly consensus. As this claim is repeated, it builds up into a large conspiracy theory. Dunning and Kruger write, quote, Even if people receive negative feedback, they still must come to an accurate understanding of why that failure has occurred, end quote, explaining that, quote, Even if people receive feedback that points to a lack of skill, they may attribute it to some other factor, end quote. 
In this case, they attribute it to a conspiracy theory. When an unqualified non-professional is corrected by those who are professional and appropriately qualified, they will typically attribute that correction to a motive which has nothing to do with their own incompetence. Instead, they will interpret the negative feedback in a manner which maintained their belief in their own skill and often attribute opposition to or dismissal of their theories by qualified professionals as a conspiracy to maintain the intellectual status quo. An example is the Science and Public Policy Institute, a non-profit group in the US which opposes the scientific consensus on global warming. Dr. Leo Elsoff, Associate Professor in Environmental and Sustainability Studies at Acadia University, comments on this organisation, saying that its reports are often written by, quote, people who are not scientists or even experts on the subjects they write about, end quote. He cites Joanne Nova, one of the organization's presenters, saying she, quote, exemplifies not only the Dunning-Kruger effect, but also the inactivist movement's frustration with mainstream climate science and its inflated sense of victimhood, end quote. Allocentric claims of bias. Allocentric means focused on others or aimed at others. The individual explains the difference between their views and those of qualified professionals as the result of inherent bias on the part of the professionals. They claim they are being objective, while all their opponents are biased and non-objective. This is a kind of attribution bias, the tendency of people to attribute negative motives to other people's thoughts and actions. Sanjit Dami, Professor of Economics at the University of Leicester, explains that this kind of attribution bias is one explanation for why people suffering the Dunning-Kruger effect fail to acknowledge and accept negative feedback when they are corrected by others. He writes, quote, Negative feedback might also be rationalised in terms of attribution bias. End quote. The necessity of doing this repeatedly can result in these claims reaching the scale of a full-blown conspiracy theory. When the unqualified individual must accuse many professionals of inherent bias and lack of objectivity, their accusations start to take the shape of a conspiracy theory, as mentioned previously. Finally, Dunning and Kruger say that aside from personal incompetence, the unqualified professional who claims they are correct and others are wrong is also very likely being misled by their motivational biases, self-serving trade definitions, selective recall of past behaviour, and, quote, the tendency to ignore the proficiencies of others, end quote. The importance of being aware of the limitations of our own knowledge and competence is a very old concept in Western philosophy. It is named Socratic ignorance after the Greek philosopher Socrates, who insisted that the first step in gaining knowledge is recognition of what we do not know. This self-awareness is critical to avoiding the Dunning-Kruger effect. Exposing our personal views and opinions to the critical scrutiny of others, especially those with special knowledge and expertise, is also essential. And this is precisely why the academic peer review process is so important. People whose personal opinions oppose the existing scholarly consensus on a subject should be very critical of their own views and subject them to critical assessment by others. Scholarly consensus is valuable not because it involves a large number of people agreeing, but because of the basis on which that agreement has been reached, a process in which multiple individuals scrutinise each other's views critically and test them for accuracy. This process is not a guaranteed method of arriving at the facts, but it is far more reliable than relying on our own opinions, independent of any scrutiny or testing from others.